Scott here from Squatch America and today we're asking the question, why did the Bigfoot cross the road? Good morning Americans, it's Friday. So today we're here on Highway 109, um, just out of between Aberdeen and Ocean Shores, uh, Washington. That's Washington with an R. And we are wondering why this busy highway has so many Bigfoot reports. We have found like almost 10 of them in this area. And we just got, uh, we just finished with a interview with a gentleman who gave us two more. Um, so what's so interesting about this spot? We're at the base of the Olympics. We are right next to the Quinault Indian Reservation. But where we're at right now, uh, we have a report to share with you. And it's about a Bigfoot crossing the road right here, right where we're at. And this is his account. I was driving back from Hokiam to Ocean Shores, where I live, when a deer ran across the road heading south, about an eighth of a mile ahead of me. From experience, I know that if one deer crosses the road, there is a good chance that another is right behind it, and so I slowed way down. Instead of a deer, here comes this guy that makes it across the road in three strides at a dead run. I came to a complete stop, somewhat in shock, like, what the hell am I looking at? This guy, yup, it was a male, no question about that, stops at the top of the roadside berm, turns around and looks right at me. He gave me a grin that was clearly a threat, turned back around, and vanished into the roadside brush. So I got to see a Sasquatch up close and personal. My window was down and I was no more than 20 feet from him. His face was human looking, except that he had no chin and he had a somewhat heavy brow ridge. The nose was a human nose and was more European than African looking. The eyes were black, the skin was gray, as was his hair, and he had more or less human teeth, what was left of them. His teeth were in terrible condition. When he ran, his palms were down, not thumbs up like us. And when he stood, his palms faced back rather than thumbs forward like a person. The arms looked a bit longer than a human, but not more than half a hand length longer. Also, since it was around one in the afternoon and I was looking south at him, I could see the shape of his head through the hair in the sun. The hair sticks way up and makes him look like he has a pointy head but really the shape of the head is human. My guess, and it is only a guess, is that he was about seven to eight feet tall. I didn't have time to take a picture. It all happened so quickly. The hands are turned inward more than a human and the arms are slightly longer. The face, nose and teeth are human looking and the shape of the head is human looking, but there is no chin. Now, the cool thing about this account is that the gentleman actually drew pictures one of the interesting things he said, he could see the sunlight shining through its hair. So that cone head, he said, wasn't so coney. It was more like the hair grew that way. Uh, so does Bigfoot naturally grow Mohawks? We don't know. Another interesting thing about the Bigfoot in this area, we've had reports of gray ones, black ones, and red ones. Gray ones, I understand. As you get old, you get gray but there's black ones and red colored ones. I imagine they're a lot like people. There's a different colored hair for different people. But uh, this is an interesting report and uh, I'm glad you enjoy it. And now here comes another one. And whoosh, just like that, we're in another spot. Yes, we are, we're up the road. Right behind us here is the border of the Quinault Indian Reservation. And it's the siding of the highway, which is just over these trees right here, uh, Highway 109, where they saw a juvenile Bigfoot running on all fours, crossing the road. Here's that account. My son and I were heading north on Highway 109, just north of Mocklips, Washington. We were in my pickup truck and I was driving. It was cloudy, but no rain. The sun had just set, but there was still plenty of light. 109 is a two-lane road along the ocean, and there wasn't any other traffic. 
So I was driving sort of slow and enjoying the nice summer evening. As I was driving, I was enjoying the view to my left and just caught a glimpse of a decent sized animal that darted from right to left across the road and into the left ditch where I lost sight of it as I drove past. As I drove, I continued to look to my left to take in the view when movement near the road ditch to the left side of my truck caught my attention. I turned my head to look out the driver's window and saw some sort of animal running on all fours in the ditch to the left beside the back of the truck about 25 feet away. It was easily keeping up with the truck as I drove about 35. My mind couldn't identify what sort of animal it was, so after a quick look at the road, I looked at the animal again. My instant reaction was that the animal looked like an ape based on how it was built and how it was moving. I'm no ape expert, but I've seen them in the movies and TV and that's what it looked like. After another quick look at the road, I turned to view the animal again, but it was gone. Since we're here in this portion here is part of a, a Washington State Park, uh, Hannah and I are going to hike down the trail here and see if we see a juvenile Sasquatch running on all fours.
So if you look back here, you can see a tree line that just goes along the entire coast. That is the border of the Quinault Indian Reservation. And that is where we are getting story after story after story. All right, that concludes our little hike. We got some apple blossoms right behind us. There's lots of fruit and food in these forests for these things. Uh, we enjoyed our little hike, did not see a baby Bigfoot. Running on all fours. Running on all fours. No. So with that, we thank you for watching. And as always, our job is to investigate the unexplained. Not to explain the uninvestigated. So please, you keep watching and... We'll keep squatching and go out and find, find Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Bye. That damn Sasquatch. Splash.